أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا حبيبنا مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم استفاه الله عز وجل وجعله خير البرية قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراقعين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان أو وصوم رمضان وحج البيت لمن استطاع إليه سبيلا صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في قوله أما بعد Praises are due to Allah. We praise Allah and we magnify His name. We put our trust in Allah in all of our fears. And we testify that there is no deity deserved to be worshipped but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be with him, is the final and chosen messenger of Allah that was sent as a mercy to all mankind. We testify that he has fulfilled the amana and the trust entrusted unto him to teach the kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We profess faith that he was sent and he the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a prophet of mercy, kindness and compassion that spread the word of peace, that spread the word of love. And that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent as a seal of all prophets. And he, the Prophet وسلم, will intercede for those who profess faith in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, I want to thank all of you, inshallah, for gathering on this platform. And I want to also wish each and every one of you a blessed Ramadan Mubarak and a blessed day of Jum'ah. Today marks the second Jum'ah in the blessed month of Ramadan. And I pray that this day comes your way while you are of good health and afiyah and well-being. And I pray that Allah will bless you and your family members. And I hope that your fasting, and I pray that your fasting is accepted. I pray that all of your devotions are accepted. Inshallah, in today's presentation, we would like to talk a little bit on zakat. Zakat, my brothers and sisters, is the third pillar of Islam. It is a fundamental aspect of our teachings. The word zakat actually means, zaka means to increase and also 
it means growth. That is in a literal sense. In addition to this, zakat Islamically is defined as a portion of the wealth that Allah has blessed you with, that you are obligated to give to the less fortunate and the poor and the needy and a specific categories of people, specific categories of people that you have to give two and a half percent of your wealth after the completion of a, a lunar year that you are obligated to give them two and a half percent if you reach the nisab and the limit that you ought to reach. So in a synopsis, it is due upon you for you to pay to a specific category of people, the poor and the needy and some other categories. If you reach an amount and you have that amount in your account or in your savings for an entire year or lunar year. My brothers and sisters, many of us, we know the importance of this and we know how vital giving our zakat is. But yet, sometimes we shy away from this responsibility. When we are obligated to give our zakat, one of the things that we should understand that giving zakat is an indication of ikmal al-islam al-insan wa dhalika li annaha ruknun al-asasi min arkan al-islam. That Islam is a religion that focuses on humanity in a complete way. It is not only a set of rituals that we engage in, but it emphasizes on the care of humanity. We think of our fellow brothers and sisters, we are not self-centered. And as I said, it is one of the fundam fundamental aspect and a rukun and a pillar of our faith. This is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Paying your zakat is of the ta'at Allah azza wa jal wa tanfeeth awamirihi and the fulfillment of his command. Ta'at Allah azza wa jal wa tanfeeth awamiruhu Fulfillment of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَٰلِكَ رَغْبَةً وَطَمْعًا فِي ثَوَابِهِ And that is because we do these are His rewards and the jaza. And we do this out of love for humanity and care for humanity and to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we give our zakat, we do not look for fame and we do not look for people to say, you are generous. But we do this as Muslim, or we should do this as Muslim, with genuine, genuine care. And then, تَقْوِيَةُ الْعَلَاقَاتِ وَتَثْبِيتُ الْمَحَبَّةِ بَيْنَ الْغَنِي وَالْفَقِيرِ By doing so, by paying your zakat, by paying your zakat, it foster a relationship that is built on love and strength between the poor and the less fortunate and the rich. The fostering of a relationship of two segments within the community without any form of segregation. When you take out your wealth and give it to the less fortunate, you build a bond with that person. 
This is a religious obligation that you have to ensure that you help the, the poor and the needy genuinely. And when you do that, the bond that you form is one of strength. The bond that you form is one of compassion. And as I said, we fast and we abstain from food and drink in, in Ramadan. So we know what the poor person experiences when the day is up. We know what the less fortunate feels when the day is up. We understand it. Because we walk that walk. So when you give that wealth that is obligated for you to give, it is not a favor you're doing. But you're doing it genuinely to please Allah and with the intent to help someone stand on their feet. So because of that sincerity and that ikhlas and that love that you're displaying to that person, it formulates a bond. It formulates that bond. And when there's that bond, there is no segregation. And when there is that bond, what happens as well, the community becomes stronger. So, that is a key point. Also, تَذْكِرَةَ النَّاسِ وَتَطْهِيرِهَا وَبْعَادَ عَنِ الْبُخْلِ وَشُحَ That by giving the zakat, you are somehow purifying yourself. Tathirun nufus. You're purifying yourself in the sense that you're keeping away from that trait of a stinginess, a miserliness. It's straining us not to be a miser. It's straining us not to hoard up our wealth in the nature of the humankind. The more wealth that they get, the more they want to accumulate. And they hoard up their wealth, not wanting to pay the zakat and what is due upon them. And this is not acceptable. So, if you want to cleanse yourself from bukhul, from stinginess and miserliness, then the zakat that we pay, it aids us. In that sense, it helps us in that sense, not to be shahihun bakhil, not to be bakhil, and not to be a miser. When you give your zakat, that as I said, Allah purifies your wealth. Your wealth is purified, it's protected, and also it grows. Because one of the, the, the literal meaning of zakat is nima, growth. And growth here can mean physical growth. It means that your wealth increases. And it also means that Allah pour barak in your wealth and you are able to do much more with whatever He bless you with. So, that's a key point. Tarbiyat al-Muslim ala jood bi malihi wal atf ala al-muhtajin wal karam. Is training the believer. It's training us as Muslim to be generous with our wealth. Generosity. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana ajwadun nas. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous of person. And he would be more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibra'il would come to him every night to revise the glorious Quran. And his generosity and his karam was described as a hard blowing wind. The Prophet ﷺ will give whatever he has and sacrifice himself. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, when he was asked, what is it that he's leaving for his family? He says, when he gives everything that he had, he says, I'm leaving for them Allah and His Messenger. So, 
تربيه المسلم على جود والكرم we're training ourselves we're training ourselves as muslim to be what generous to display generosity والعطف على المحتاجين and compassion towards the needy and being generous towards the needy so my brothers and sisters among the benefits of giving your zakat that your zakat inshallah when you spend it for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fihi ziyadat al khair wal baraka min Allah azza wa jal fil amwal there will be excessive baraka in your wealth there will be excessive good in your wealth in the sense that you are able to do so much with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. That you will have some sort of self-contentment with whatever Allah has provided for you. Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa ar-razzaq. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a provider. He, Allah, is the sustainer. When you live with that awareness that there is no fear, there will be no fear. So, there will be ziyadat al-khayr in your wealth. You were able to accomplish the things that you set out for in the sense that you will be among those that have barakah in your wealth and your wealth will increase. Here is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. La yanqus min mali sadaqah. That when you give a sadaqah and you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens is that your wealth does not decrease. But rather it will increase and in addition to this daf al zakat giving your zakat sabab min asbab al dukhul al jannah it is a reason among many reasons why subhanallah you can enter into paradise Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْقَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْثِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who spend فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Those who spend in good times and those who spend in their difficult times in times of difficulties you give in times of comfort when you're okay you give وَالْقَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْثِ And those who, subhanAllah, so suppresses their anger. And those who are willing to forgive others. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, those categories of people, those who give in their good times, in their bad times, in times of tribulations and hardship, in their rough times they give. And those who forgive, and those who suppress their anger are considered to be among the muhsineen, among those who do ihsan to others, and those who do good to others. And in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are considered to be among the muhsineen, and Allah loves the muhsineen. Allah loves those who do ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his apostle, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi he said that Subhanallah, when you give fi sabilillah, when you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala, it would be a means for you to be protected while you're within the bowels of the earth. 
and that you will be safeguarded from punishment. If you choose not to give fi sabilillah, and you, you choose to deprive the poor and the needy what is theirs, while you are in the bowels of the earth, there will be a serpent over your head, and it will say to you, Ana maluka wa ana khanzuka. Your wealth will be transformed into the serpent. And it will say to you, I am your wealth. I am your wealth. And I am your treasure. So the money that you hoard up, that's the point. In this life, it will not be of any benefit for you as you're within the bowels of the earth. So just ensure, brothers and sisters, in this month of Ramadan, if we are shying away from this responsibility in paying your zakat, in ensuring that the rights of the poor and the needy is fulfilled, that right and the haq that you have to fulfill towards them, that you do that. Ensure that you as a person find experts to calculate your zakat if you're unfamiliar with how to do so. Ensure that you look at your earnings and everything that you have and your savings and calculate your zakat and calculate it wealth. Now, another important point I want to mention that there are certain categories of people that, subhanAllah, that needs zakat. And while these categories are there, what we call masarif zakat, there are eight in numbers. And we want to go through them and then share some points regarding it. Number one, al-fuqara, the poor. And the poor person, huwa alladhi la yajid ma yakfihi, aw yajid bil kasb, aw ghayrihi, baad ma yakfihi. He is that person. That poor person is that person who does not find sufficient what he needs to sustain himself. Or he finds a little bit to sustain himself and he does not have sufficient. So that's a poor person. The poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the poor, then he mentioned al-miskeen. And the miskeen is that person whom alladheena yajiduna akthar kifayatihim aw nifsiha min kasbin aw ghayra dhalik illa annahum la yajiduna kifayatihim wa kifayata man talzimuhu nafakatihim kullaha. He is that person that subhanallah finds most of what he needs or some of what he needs through the means of earning or not but that person does not receive sufficient the first is the the poor is that person that does not find sufficient what he needs either by earning or or not or does not even find some of what he needs. The miskeen is that person that finds a little bit what he needs and does not have sufficient. Some of the scholars they are saying that it is the same term. The term uses in an alternating way. But The scholars have this discussion among themselves. Which one is more needy? فَذَهَبَ إِمَامْ مَالِكْ إِلَىٰ أَنَّ الْمِسْكِينَ أَشَدُّ حَاجَ مِنَ الْفَقِيرِ The Imam Malik, he said that the miskin is more in a desperate 
place than a faqir that is based on their understanding and their definition. لِأَنَّ الْمِسْكِينَ هُوَ سَاكِنُ عَنِ الْحَرَكَةِ أَيْ لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَى الْعَمَلِ وَالْكَسْمِ That a miskin has no capability of working and he has no capability of earning. أَمَّا الْفَقِيرُ فَقَادِرُ الْعَمَلِ وَالْكَسْبِ But as for a faqir and the poor, he has the capability of earning and he has the capability of Subhanallah, working and to toil for himself, but the earning is very limited. وَذَهَبَ الشَّافِعِيَّ وَالْحَنْبَلِيَّ وَالْحَنَابِلَةِ إِلَى أَنَّ الْفَقِيرَ أَشَدُّ حَاجَ مِنَ الْمِسْكِينَ And the Shafi'i and the Hanbali scholars, they said that the faqir and the poor and needy is much more in need than the miskin. So, what is necessary for us to understand? That some of our ulama and our scholars said that the way the verse is listed, the eight categories, category number one, the poor and the needy, the poor, and then you have the needy, وَالْعَامِلُونَ عَلَيْهَا those that go and collect the zakat, they are entitled for zakat as well. But in the Hanafi madhab, they have guidelines concerning this. It means that they must be appointed by the state to go and collect zakat. Not anyone will go and say, I'm collecting zakat, so I'm entitled for zakat. So, wal amiluna alayha. And those who do some sort of work connected to, to the collection and the distribution of the zakat. وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةُ قُلُوبَهُمْ قُلُوبَهُمْ And those who entered into Islam, uh, subhanAllah, um, and somehow you try your, your, your best to help them and assist them. فَهُمْ سَادَةُ الْمُطَاعُونَ فِي أَقْوَامِهِمْ مِمَّنْ يَرْجَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ أَوْ إِسْلَامَ أَقْوَامِهِمْ بِإِسْلَامِهِمْ فَيُؤْتِينَ تَرْغِيبًا لَهُمْ or if you see someone that is inclined to, subhanAllah, to Islam and, and they are in need, that you try to help them. But uh, some of our scholars were saying that this category is no longer there. And that if a person is, is, is inclined to faith and Islam, subhanAllah, what happens is that, and they need, then you help them. Then they fall within the category of the poor and the needy. Right? So, that's one. Um, Al-Riqab. And those, in the days of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, slavery was prevalent. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke against slavery. And to show how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advocated for the freeing of the slave. So you could have taken your zakat and helped a Muslim slave that had that responsibility to pay, pay their slave master an amount of, uh, of money to gain their freedom. Right? So you could have helped. The Prophet ﷺ advocated this. And this is a, a something in our religion. But in our time, slavery is abolished. But it is a clear indication that our Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet of love and compassion, advocated to help the less fortunate and the weak and the oppressed in our community. And then you had al gharimuna and those that are in debt are entitled for zakat. Now, I want to take a moment and share this with our brothers and sisters because this question is posed. If I have a mortgage, do, do I have to pay zakat because I have a debt? If I'm paying for my car, do I have to uh, somehow uh, pay zakat because I have a debt? But what it means, legitimate debt. You may have a mortgage, but yet you have savings of millions of dollars in account, of thousands of dollars in your account. 
And that is what counts. A person that really is in need and that is in debt that does not have any savings. So your mortgage that you're paying is not a legitimate debt unless you do not have sufficient wealth to sustain yourself and you don't have any savings. So we have to understand what it means by death or someone that is indebted, legitimate death. Fi sabilillah. In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Traditionally, the, 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 the scholars, the earlier scholars understood fi sabilillah as those that went on the battlefield and fought to defend their deen and their religion during the time of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So, it's confined to that, those in the path of Allah. But some of the contemporary scholars, they, they use this, fi sabilillah, to indicate that you can pay, give zakat to schools. You can give zakat to, to any aspect where promotion of deen is concerned. And in my assessment, that is far-fetched. And many of the scholars are saying that this is not um, acceptable. That fees of is specific and therefore you cannot give your zakat to an entity, but rather it must be someone who is a sole beneficiary and there is ownership. So you could give the zakat to a student that's, that is in need, but he has the spending power of that because he possesses that. He owns that. He has it in his hand. You cannot give a zakat to build a masjid. This question is posed many times because the masjid is an entity. You could give zakat to the less fortunate within your community or if that masjid engage in, engages in social work where they help the poor and the needy. So you can give your zakat to the masjid and this will be an amana where they will take that, that responsibility to ensure that that zakat is given to the less fortunate, insha'Allah. So, wa ibn sabil those who is al-gharib, al-musafir, al-ladhi inqata'at bihi al-tariq fi ghayra baladi. Someone is that is on a journey and he has no access to his wealth, he has wealth, but he has no access to his wealth because he is traveling. Then that person, you could give them zakat. So, when we look at all of this, when one of the scholars was asked, which take preference in terms of giving the zakat? The respond that he says, that, you give based on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid down the category in the Quran. So priority number one will be al-faqir. Priority number two will be the miskin and the needy. Uh, priority number three, priority number four, priority number five. And that is the way it is. So let us be cautious and understand the importance of giving your wealth and your zakat, insha'Allah. And that you should, as a Muslim, understand that giving the zakat is foundation in Islam. It is a pillar of Islam that we should not shy away from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all, guide us and protect us, and grant us goodness in this life and the afterlife. I appeal to each and every one of you, insha'Allah, kindly do not forget to give a portion of your zakat to Masjid al-Abideen. That Masjid al has taken on that responsibility 
to ensure that the poor and the needy within our community is taken care of, we give out a quarterly uh, financial assistance to the less fortunate, over uh, over 60 zakat recipient, close to 70 zakat recipient, that we help and we assist and we monitor. And also we provide uh, food packages and hampers uh, periodically to the less fortunate. We're there to assist the less fortunate. So we appeal to our brothers and sisters to sustain this program, to kindly reach out to us, inshallah, and we can work together to better the lives of the people within our community. While many of us um, have taken that, that responsibility on your shoulder, we are here to help. And sometimes we give to the less fortunate in other countries, but while you do so, and that is your right, uh, ensure that the people within your locality, subhanAllah, that their needs are met. Ensure that if you have a poor and a needy within your families, your relatives, inshallah, your siblings, your uncles and your aunts that are less fortunate, ensure that, uh, subhanAllah, you, you give them your zakat because they have that right and that haq that you have to fulfill to help them first. We have a responsibility towards our families first before helping a stranger. And sometimes we, uh, we rush towards helping strangers rather than helping our own family members, inshallah, when it comes to our zakat. I think I've said enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you, guide you and protect you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وسائر المؤمنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله 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 الله